Hello everybody, this is Kermit Killed the Cat, and welcome to your 17th Lua 5.2 tutorial. So, we've now finished all of the main part of this series, so now we're moving on to the standard Lua libraries. So the first one we're going to go over, as you can probably see, is the math library. And this tutorial is going to follow a bit of a different format than most of them do. Uh, I already have all the code written out, and I'm just going to explain what each of these functions and constants do. So, let's get started. So you can see that I have each of the functions or constants listed out and in, as a comment I either have what it would look like in a math equation or the value of the constant or uh, a an explanation on what each of the functions do. So uh, I'm going to assume that you know what all of the basic commonly used math functions are like the trigonometric functions and stuff like that. So I'm not going to be explaining those, I'll just be explaining how each of the Lua functions relates to the math function. So let's get started. We have math.abs or math.abs. It's the absolute value of x, so you can see it would look like this in a math equation. So this would return 50 because the parameter is negative. Math.pi is pi, 3.14, it goes on forever. Uh, math.sin is sine of x, so this would return 0, I believe. Math.cos is cosine of x, this would be negative 1, I think. Uh, math.tan is the tangent of x, it would be 0, I think. I'm not very good at remembering these values. Math.asin is the inverse sine of x, so you, if you don't know what that is, you give it the ratio of the sides and it spits out the angle. So you usually see this as sine to the negative 1 of x, and this wouldn't actually have the caret in math, it would be uh, superscript negative 1. And that's just the notation for inverse function, so it would be sine negative 1 of x. Math.acos is the inverse cosine of x, it's the same thing but for cosine, so you see it as cos to the negative 1 of x. Math.atan is inverse tangent, and it's tan to the negative 1 of x. And these all do the same thing, they're just the inverse for each of the trigonometric functions. Then math.atan2 is kind of an interesting one, it's the inverse tangent function, but instead of get as a parameter dividing the ratio of the sides or giving it the ratio of the sides as a decimal number you give it each of the sides as a separate parameter and this makes the function able to tell what quadrant y the triangle would be in so if you're using it for stuff like games you need to use this uh, to get the proper value and I'd recommend looking up the ATAN2 function on Wikipedia it'll tell you more about it but you'll end up using ATAN2 a lot more than you use just normal ATAN, especially for making games. Math.deg converts any radian value into degrees, so it multi multiplies it by uh, 180 and then divides it by pi. So uh, math.pi would give you 180. Math.rad does the exact opposite, converts degrees into radians, so divide or yeah, multiplies it by pi and divides it by 180. So 180 would give you pi. Math.sinh gives you the hyperbolic sine of x, and I'm, I don't know what these functions do, but uh, there's one for hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine, and hyperbolic tangent. So each of those uh, goes with the corresponding trigonometric function. Not sure how they're related though. Math.floor rounds any uh, decimal number you give it down so no matter what value it gets it will always round down so you could have given this 0 0.9 it and it would still spit out 0. Math.seal does the opposite it always rounds up so you could give this 0 0.01 and it would still give you 1. So these are the rounding functions. Math.pow is uh, raising the first parameter to the power of the second parameter so a to the b. Math.square root is the square root of the parameter or uh, the parameter to the one-half power and if you want to use any other roots uh, you can, I added this in the comment uh, there's no function for it so you use math.pow and then one over the index of the root that you want so uh, the nth root of a would be a to the one over b uh, math.x is raising e to the x and e is uh, the natural number Log of f, the math.log function gives you ln of x, natural logarithms. Math.log 10 gives you log base 10 of x, and I added another comment here. 
Lua doesn't have a log base function, so you use the uh, ln of b divided by ln of a for log base a of b. So if you need uh, the logarithm of a different base, use that. And you can create your own function to that for that and make your own log base function. Math.min takes a list of numbers. It doesn't have to just be two. and gives you the minimum of them. So you could have added more parameters here. We have like 8, uh, 0, 21. And now this would give you 0. You can give it any number of parameters. And math.max does the opposite. It gives you the maximum of the parameters. So here it would be 18. Math.modf, uh, I'm not sure why it's called modf, but this separates the decimal and uh, fractional parts of the number, so this would actually be 0 0.2. So if you give it 10 and 10.2, or any decimal number, it will return two values. One is the whole part of the number, so 10, and then the other is the fractional part of the number, which is 0 0.2. Uh, math.randomseed seeds uh, the random number generator that we'll go over next and you can seed it to any number uh, look up how uh, the C function rand works if you want to know more about why you do this usually you just seed it to the time os.time gets the current unix time and now the random functions so it's uh, over or not overloaded but it can take three different kinds of parameters if you give it no parameters it'll give you some decimal between 0 and 1. If you give it one parameter, it'll give you a random int between 1 and the parameter, so from 1 to 10 in this case. And if you give it two parameters, it'll give you a random integer between the first parameter and the second parameter, so between 50 and 100. Uh, Math.frx, I think that means fractional exponent. Uh, this is a weird function, I've never seen this in math before. Uh, it normalizes the number, so it takes the parameter and it normalizes it to some fraction times 2 to the exponent. So fr the case we have here, frexp of 3, would come out to 3 fourths times 2 squared. So and 3 fourths times 2 squared does get you back to 3. You can do the math out. It works. Uh, I'm not sure what this is used for, but it's here if you need it. And math.ldx does the exact opposite. You give it the fractional and the exponent that would come out of frexp, and it gives you the uh, normal number. So uh, if you take 3 fourths and 2, for 3 fourths being the frac part and 2 being the x part, then you get 3 out. Math.huge is another weird one. It kind of represents infinity in Lua. If you try to print it, it'll give you INF in most cases. And if you try to do math operations on it, uh, things go weirdly. It'll usually just give you math.inf again, or uh, a special not a number value, which you can't directly access. And you can compare things to math.huge. So one is less than math.huge. Uh, really, anything is less than math.huge. And the main use for this is um, for loops. If you want a for loop to go on forever, you just say for i equals 0, uh, math.huge, do. And then this last one, this isn't a part of the math library, but I like to add it because it can be useful. It's the factorial function, so you see it as x, x explanation, sorry, x exclamation point. And uh, it just gets the factorial of the number, so every number leading up to that number sequentially multiplied together so you define it as if n is 0 return 1 because the factorial of 0 is 1 it's just how it's defined and otherwise you return n times uh, math.factorial so it's a recursive call of n minus 1 so this isn't included in the math library but I like to add it because it is useful if you're doing anything with probability so this is how you define it and if you want to you can when you're writing your programs so that's all for this video. I know it was a very short video and also kind of a different format. So I'll try to get another video out this week. I know I haven't been uh, getting videos out as much as I should be. I've just been busy lately. I'm sorry. So if I can, I'll get the next library, the table library, out this week too. So I'll see you then.